Welcome back to Senior Savvy Cannabis. I'm Katherine Goldberg. Today, we're going to talk about three different ways to fight pain with cannabis. If you're new here, welcome. You're in good company. We have 50,000 subscribers who, like you, want to use cannabis to be the best version of themselves. So let's jump into this conversation about three different cannabinoids and how they work on pain separately. And then I'll give you some tips for when you're in the dispensary, what you can ask for. I'll also, if you're new here, there's always an extra fun fact. So keep listening because at the end, we're going to talk about two terpenes that also help with pain. So everyone knows THC, right? THC gets you high. Um, THC can have a profound impact on pain relief by way of distraction. When you consume cannabis, you don't care about the pain as much. And this isn't to say it in like a derogatory way or a negative way in any way. It's that the power of distraction is actually pretty profound. And if you can just kind of stop thinking about the pain for just a moment, your perception of the pain reduces. So for seniors, that works well. Here's the thing. You, you will get high, right? THC is psychoactive. And you may want to or you may not want to. And a lot of people don't want to. And I want to talk about two other cannabinoids that help reduce pain without getting you high, with no um, psychedelic effect or um, psychoactive effect. So we all know about CBD as well, right? It's not like 2007, we all got the memo, CBD seems to help in some way. So unlike THC, which changes your perception, time perception, your body perception, all of these things, CBD doesn't, but it works on the inflammation response. And what I think is most interesting about something that works on the inflammation response is that that's tightly related to serotonin and how much serotonin is available for us to use. So when our bodies are inflamed, right, that we're having an inflammatory response, there's less serotonin active to help our mood, to help our gut to help these things that are really important in terms of quality of life. So CBD works on reducing the inflammation response and therefore reduces some of the swelling associated with inflammation. I want to mention two interesting products right now. I had over the summer, um, Dr. Christopher Palmer on the podcast to talk about minor cannabinoids. And he's a scientist and he developed he level therapeutics. So level therapeutics are made from hemp. So there's no THC at all, right? But they come in little pills. And what's interesting is that they sell, these are available online for all adults over 21 legally. They sell CBD, but they also sell the raw version, CBDA. And according to the lab work, CBDA in its raw form may help inflammation even more than just CBD. Um, so there are options. Even if you don't live in a state where there are dispensaries, there are still things you can try that might help your pain. To be perfectly honest, if someone comes to me and they're like, I'm in severe pain, I, I can't stand it. I'm not going to recommend a CBD tablet. I'm going to recommend that they take, honestly, like a puff of a joint, just one puff, and just get everything under control. I think in terms of long-term daily relief, CBD and CBDA can provide a lot of benefits. Oh, an even more interesting fact. So these are available nationwide because they're hemp, right? There's another product that I've talked about kind of extensively on the podcast. I had 
someone from Emerald um, Extracts come on oops, and talk about their RSO tablets, right? RSO usually comes in a syringe. It's messy and sticky and gooey. These are tablets. So this is a 27 to 1 Meaning that for one part THC, there are 27 parts CBD. This could provide significant relief. This, however, is only available in California where it's made. On January 1st, I wrote a blog post about what it would take to treat cannabis like every other product in the world where, you know, it could be mailed. Um, Spoiler alert, it has to be descheduled because any drug that's scheduled is not going to be okay with being mailed. Um, I get the rest of my meds mailed, but, you know, not cannabis. So that's frustrating, but if that's something that changes in 2026, that would be amazing. Um, so, okay, so to recap, right, THC really will help pain, but it will get you high in various amounts. Of course... You can have a small amount of THC, just enough to activate the CBD, and that won't get you high, as in these 27 to 1. Um, cool. Okay, great. And I think we're on the same page. So THC is going to distract you from the pain, and CBD is going to take care of the inflammation response on the back end, and it's going uh, it's going to allow more serotonin to be able to work towards you feeling good. Cool. These are pretty standard cannabinoids that we all know about by now, or we're learning about. My favorite cannabinoid is CBG. Okay, so CBG is called the mother cannabinoid. All the other ones come from it. I don't really think that's the most interesting thing. What's interesting is that it's not psychoactive, so it doesn't get you high, but it profoundly reduces pain in many people by tamping down neuroepinephrine so neuroepinephrine is like our fight and fight and flight response it's our it's the go it's active um when there's less neuroepinephrine available we are less jittery we react to pain less so if pain is like an alarm bell then cbg is like turning down the volume on that alarm Okay, so CBG could be a great daily treatment for a lot of people. And tra I'm not a doctor. I'm None of this is medical advice. It's just what helps a lot of people because I work with a lot of seniors who want pain relief without getting high, and this is what they tell me. So, again, I love the RSO tablets. Unfortunately, they're only available in California for now. But um, they do make a CBG one, and these are fantastic because, again— it won't get you high and it will help you focus, um, which is an interesting also kind of addition um, that not only it helps with the pain, but it also can help you focus. Um, so, okay, so we have three cannabinoids. You may be asking, well, like, what about the entourage effect? Don't cannabinoids work better when they're together? Yes. But if you've gone into a dispensary in the past decade, you may have noticed that the flower is like 28% THC, 0% CBD, which is frustrating as well, because when cannabis went from being medical to recreational, there was like this THC arms race that I think was brought on by a certain kind of consumer, not going to point fingers, but it's a certain kind of young man who, and it's not all young men, but it's a certain kind of young man who really wants to be zoned out, who wants to just be really, really high. And that's what sold and sells. And that's why that that's what's available at the dispensaries. Um, I think there are more, companies coming in and saying like, oh, hey, consumers actually want a balanced product. So if you find flour that is maybe a one-to-one -one ratio, that sounds amazing, um, but it's hard to find. And that is one reason why I like these 
tablets because the main ingredient is the main ingredient. Like, you know what you're getting, you know, this, the CBG flower was grown specifically for its CBG properties. And that's what's been extracted in the RSO. So that's what you're getting. Um, final point. People say, okay, well, this is great. Like what, what strain is high in CBG? I'm really hesitant to answer questions like that because as we've learned, they can label it whatever they want. No one's checking. You don't know. You know, it, it's weed. You look inside, like you have to ask for the COA and you have to look at the chemotype to see what's actually in the cannabis, right? Because it's probably all going to be THC, but if you look at the COA, you might find something that's high in CBG. You might find something that's high in CBG. You'll be able to look at the diversity of cannabis just from a new angle and pick products based on that. Um, and I know many of you are already asking for the COAs so you can pick energizing sativas instead of sativas that are in the sativa section and labeled sativa, but the first terpene is myrcene. So you get home and it's really sleepy and you're like, this doesn't feel like a sativa. Okay, so again, so to wrap up, we have cannabinoids that help. Um, the fun fact that I promised you. Typically, when we talk about terpenes, we talk about terpenes in terms of effect, right? Is it going to be sedating? Is it going to be energizing? However, there are two terpenes that work on pain specifically, um, not so much on effect. And those are beta carophylline and cumuline. And both of beta carophylline works on inflammation and cumuline works on swelling. So they work really well together. And again, people ask like, well, what strains are high in these? And I'm hesitant to say, because you really have to look at the COA, not just what the strain is called. So a couple weeks ago, I interviewed a pain researcher um, and he works with a company that makes these drops that are basically just the terpenes. Um, I was very hesitant because I kind of was like, where's the weed? Like, you know, but the weed's the good part. Um, but I've had a couple people try them in addition to everything else they're using to treat their pain. And the results are promising. So again, I'm not going to promise anything, but I just want you guys to know that they're are many different tools that you can use to treat your pain so that your quality of life day to day is better. And that's all we're trying to do here. So I'm thrilled that you're interested in the science. And I think the more we understand about the plant, the easier it is to make choices that support us. Um, and sometimes that's all it takes. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad it's the new year and we're on this trend. And I think this is the year for cannabis because everyone's using it and it's like pretty mainstream. So the timing is perfect and we'll be back next week.